If you're into reptiles, you're probably into snakes, but what if you want something big, small, or in between? Today, let's go over the top five best pet snakes at every size. My name's Adam, this is Pikachu. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. The cool thing about snakes is that, well, you can get them in basically every size. If you want them really small, really big, or somewhere in between, that's where the sweet spot is for most of us. But let's go through. Let's talk about small snakes, big snakes, and the ones in between. Starting off with number five at the small end, hognose snakes. Now I know I could have said something that is truly micro, but none of those really make great snakes that are pets. So let's start with the smallest of the small that make great pets. And we could have talked about Kenyan sand boas too, but I think hognose snakes are the best for most people. Now this is a colubrid from North America. They're really easy to take care of. They're diurnal, so they're out during the day and they eat normally really, really well. Once you get them as babies, they should already be on food and then you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever. If you get them out of the egg, you're a breeder, then you already know these guys are tough to get to eat right away. But what I love about them is they have voracious appetites. These guys love food once they're on food. Now, of course, there's breeding cycles and things like that where they may go off for certain amounts of time. But as a rule of thumb, these guys love food. And what's not to love about those cute little upturned snouts, those keeled scales, which feel way different than most species of snake, and if it's a male, we're talking a foot and a half, a female, two and a half feet, three feet, if you get a really big one. But even then, the biggest females that I've ever seen are something like 600 grams, maybe a little bit more, but in general, 400 grams is where they top out. So we're talking less than one pound for a snake. And these things grow pretty slow. And males can top out at less than a foot. It just depends how they're fed, when they're young, and the genetics. Now, something to keep in mind with hognose snakes, they're rear fang venomous. But what that means is they are, well, dangerous to their prey. Things like salamanders, newts, toads, things like that. Even rodents, which is what they'll eat in captivity. But they're not dangerous to you. I have filmed dozens of episodes with Pikachu. I have never had him do that. So I'm gonna clean up and we'll move on to number four. Also, the dogs are going crazy. Just everything at once happens all together. This is great. Okay, Diamond, I know you're not a snake, but will you promise not to pee on me? Good boy. Number four, spotted pythons. So spotted pythons are, in my opinion, some of the coolest and most underrated snakes in the entire world. Now I have one Jimmy who just ate, so we're gonna leave him alone. I don't want any more poop on me. And if you're an OG subscriber of the channel, you've been watching videos for a while, you know I used to talk about these guys at nauseum because I think that they are so unknown relatively to how cool they are. In my opinion, if I could have any snake as a starter snake, it's probably gonna be a spotted python. Now you could go with the Antaresia genus, which is spotted pythons, Stinson's pythons, or I guess Stinson's pythons are technically children's pythons now, and pygmy pythons, otherwise known as anthill pythons. All of those are in a small group. Now, these are four foot snakes, but much smaller than something like a ball python, for example. Smaller around, not as heavy bodied. They eat really well, they're from Australia, so if you're an Australian viewer that always says, oh mate, I, I'm not gonna try to do your accent. If you say that, oh well, I can't have anything you ever talk about, well, you can have these, because that's where they're from, from Australia. If you don't know, Australians can only keep things that are from Australia. Now you know. Overall, a really interesting looking species, and you don't have to worry about getting caught up in morphs and stuff like that, because in North America, there really aren't any available. Well, very few, very hard to find, very expensive. Most of the children's pythons, spotted pythons, pygmy pythons that you're gonna find are gonna be the wild type or classic type, and those, in my opinion, are beautiful anyway. You don't have to worry about that. Now, these guys are really great for handling. They're not gonna really be too bitey or defensive right out of the egg, and I think that because they are so inexpensive to set up, being that sure they are arboreal, they're an arboreal type species, they're gonna need a little bit of height, but because they only get to four feet at, I'm talking maxed out, well, there is one gargantuan six foot spotted python I found once, but we're talking about like once in a lifetime experience. That's, you're never gonna find one of these. So count on that size that we were talking about, four feet. 
and because they eat well, and because they're good for temperament, and because you can hand it to a child, the child's not gonna hurt it, it's not gonna hurt the child, it's a really good family pet too. Overall, if you're looking for something that's not small, but not big, and that's a python, but the smallest python genus in the world, you're looking for Antaresia, you're looking for spotted pythons. But quickly, before we move on, I will say cold turkey might be great on sandwiches, but quitting your habit that way, probably not the best idea. I'm not talking about magic pills and potions, I'm talking about today's sponsor, Fume. Not every habit has to be bad, so why be so drastic and just cut it out completely, when you could have an alternative that isn't bad for you. And Fume is an innovative award nominated way to do just that. This device is amazing. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural delicious flavors. What I love is I can breathe through this thing with Diamond in the room and there's no danger to him at all. Myself, I fidget constantly. I need to be moving. And what I love about this device here is it's a little bit of a fidget device also. You can control the airflow from the bottom. And just because the way it's magnetic and it clicks, it feels satisfying just to move around in my hand. The way you recharge it is there's cores that you stick inside of the fume. And that's really great because you just stick a core inside and the flavor is anew again. And I've got some favorites, raspberry lemon, sparkling grapefruit, and orange vanilla. I love all of these flavors. They're great. They're not over powering, they're not overbearing, they're just right. And with over 100,000 customers served and thousands of success stories, there's no reason that this can't be you. So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup with destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash Wiccans or scan the QR code you see on the screen right now. Then use code WICKENS to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com slash WICKENS to save an additional 10% off your order today. Number three, should have been in my hands if it didn't uh, squirt, urates, and feces at me at mock speeds. Oh, we're talking about ball pythons, okay? Ball pythons, in my opinion, are the best medium-sized snake. They're the perfect size because they are so well-tempered, they're a great handling snake too, for very many reasons. First of all, they don't really move all that much. In fact, Pikachu normally doesn't move at all. I'll put him around my neck, he doesn't move the entire video. He was moving and grooving today and I was wondering why. Thought maybe he was hungry, I was a little nervous. It wasn't hunger, it was the other opposite of hunger. But the one thing I will say about hunger with ball pythons, the one downside is they don't really eat that well sometimes, uh, especially males when it comes to breeding season, if they've been breeding before, especially. So Pikachu, for example, goes off food for five months every year, then he goes right back on food, no issues at all. I don't really have issues with him losing weight. He's a great size, you saw how big he is. That's about as big as a adult male will get, and females don't really get that much bigger. I mean, there are instances of five and a half foot snakes, even a six foot female, but for the most part, four and a half, five feet is where they top out. And they're a manageable size in terms of how heavy bodied they are. You're not gonna have to worry about this thing hurting you. It's not gonna strangle you. No snake is gonna try to strangle you, by the way. But these ones, even if they were to hold on a little bit too tight, you're gonna be safe. You're gonna be able to manipulate the snake. They are not a danger to you. Plus, ball pythons come in all sorts of morphs. They come in normal morphs. They come in, if you want a yellow snake, if you want a snake that's almost all the way black, completely white, that is, well, it's called pieball. That's my favorite. And then, of course, there's the albinos like Pikachu that we just saw, who is now uh, away. I can't even believe he did that. I'm gonna have a talk with him. Overall, great snakes. Everybody knows what they are. No need to beat a dead horse. Let's talk about something a little bit different, but also kind of similar to the same in that everyone knows what it is. Talking about number two, boas. Now, I was gonna put Dumal's boas on the list, but the problem with Dumal's boas is they don't really get long enough to be an intermediate step between a ball python and what is gonna be number one. Because number one's a giant snake, obviously, right? So I think that, well, boas, a BCI, for example, or a BI, they're called now, is gonna get something like eight foot, maybe 10. So they're gonna be bigger than a ball python by quite a bit. They're a lot heavier. For example, Franny. This is Franny. She's a seven or seven and a half foot BI, and she is about full grown. Maybe she's gonna grow a little bit slow and a little bit bigger, but she's about 25 pounds, where Pikachu might be three or four pounds. So these guys are quite a bit bigger, even though on paper, they're, she's only two foot or two and a half foot bigger than Pikachu. She's just so much heavier bodied, and she's gonna eat bigger prey items, but less frequently. Pikachu eats every 10 days. Franny eats 
every three weeks. So he's gonna eat three meals for every one she does. His meals cost about three and a half dollars. Hers are about seven dollars. So it's still cheaper to feed her year by year than it is to feed Pikachu, even though she's so much bigger. And their metabolisms are pretty slow too. Are you flattening out to poop? I swear, Diamond. You will be fired. Boas are getting to the category of an animal that I wouldn't call dangerous. I don't think any of them are dangerous, but potentially you should maybe have two people handle this thing at a time. Any snake, in my opinion, over 10 feet, you should have two people handle because say you're a smaller person and the snake you wrap around your neck and it's just trying to get up to your head or something and it just squeezes a little bit too, too tight. They're not trying to hurt you, but they could accidentally. So out of an abundance of caution, uh, I have a zookeeper here now. I think I've talked about this before, very lucky. So number one, the one snake that's gonna be number one, they don't come out at all unless I am in the room. The reticulated pythons, now, even though they're super dwarfs and they're like, you know, six or seven, or eight feet they don't come out unless i am around and the boa i don't let aria take out unless i am around just for an abundance of caution just because they are very very strong animals but they're very very placid B franny doesn't want to eat anybody she wants to be handled and she wants to be loved it seems like they don't actually want to be loved but what i'm saying is she is so tolerant to being handled she does a great job absolutely beautiful animal and i'm so lucky to have her if you wanted something a little bit smaller than a bi bccs by the way boa constrictor constrictors the true red tails get a little bit bigger 12 foot sometimes stuff like that but doom rose boas if you want a heavy bodied snake much heavier body than a ball python but not as long as a bi doom rose boas on the other hand my doom rose boa is about 22 pounds and maybe about six foot so quite a bit smaller than franny looks smaller but almost the same weight. Either way, boas are freaking awesome. And the number one snake of all sizes, so the biggest snake on the list that makes a great pet, Burmese pythons. You guys knew this was gonna happen, right? If I'm picking the biggest snakes, it's either gonna be a reticulated python, a Burmese python, African rock python. Those are the really big boys. African rock pythons are usually terrible pets. Uh, reticulated pythons and Burmese pythons, it's a matter of opinion. Some people like reticulated pythons better. I prefer Burmese pythons. Here's why. Reticulated pythons, there's a whole video uh, right here, the difference, but mainly the main difference for me is handling because I like to handle my snakes. My berms, if I get Kratos out, no problem. I handle this thing, no problem. Kratos doesn't huff or puff, doesn't want to blow my house down, nothing. If I open the enclosures of the reticulated pythons, they think I'm food immediately and it makes me a little bit nervous because it takes a while to get them out of food response. So of course, some people like that. Here's my comparison. Reticulated pythons are German shepherds. They're very, very intelligent, whereas a Burmese python is a golden retriever. Cute, fluffy, not really a lot going on in its head, but just an awesome, awesome pet. I personally own a golden retriever for real. I have Stevie, so I prefer golden retriever type animals. So that's why I make that comparison. It just depends what you like. Anyway, Burmese pythons get really big. We're talking these things can get well over 10 feet. Sometimes they can get 13, 14, 15, 18 foot. And you wanna keep these things not crazy heavy bodied, but they can get up to 200 pounds. Probably not healthy. You're probably overfeeding if it's a 200 pound animal, where Kratos, for example, is about 50 pounds. He's about 12 feet, 13 feet, something like that. He's 50-ish pounds, maybe 55 now. So he's actually the same weight as my golden retriever, Stevie. These guys eat really well, but they don't have an over crazy food drive like reticulated pythons do. But that's again, another selling point. That's why a lot of people like the retics. I like the berms because I can open the enclosure and I'll crawl onto my lap. I don't have to worry about him trying to think I'm food first. And Burmese pythons come in a bunch of morphs. We're talking about hypos. We're talking about, you can put hypos and albinos together to get pearls. You can get regular ones, which are just beautiful. And there's greens, granites. There's a whole bunch of different ones. I love Burmese pythons. They're my favorite snake. Kratos is my favorite snake to handle. Bing, bang, boom, Bob's your uncle, friends are at. There's your top five. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think? Do you think that there's a better option for one of these sizes? And of course, hit the like button while you're down there. It's the mechanism trick that YouTube cares about the most to really propel these videos to more people. And thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys supporting this channel means the world to me. It means that we get to do extra content, videos early, discounts on merch, all that for as little as $1. And that's it because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.